Uh, so without further ado, would you please welcome Dr. Christy Lynn Woods and Mr. Mark Fury to kick off tonight's performance. Thank you all so much for coming this evening. Uh, really excited to, uh, to get to share this program with you all. Uh, this has been uh, quite an exciting last year in my life and um, putting this recital together was just sort of a little bit of like grit and go for it kind of thing. Um, I picked pieces and people that I enjoy being around and pieces that I enjoy playing. Um, also, I am doing a, a recording project coming up, and so I'm featuring pieces by Phoenix Composer. So there's a couple of brand new pieces that you'll get an opportunity to, to share in the, uh, the premiere of those this evening. Um, this first piece, so this is a chamber music recital. Uh, this first piece is the opposite of chamber music. This is uh, literally just a show piece for bassoon and piano. Um, why uh, is it on this recital? Basically, uh, to get myself inspired to put together a recital. Um, this piece, this is the Weber Andante in Hungarian Rondo. This is something that when I was a teenager and first really starting to develop a love of the bassoon, I, uh, I wanted to play this. I, I heard these recordings and was so drawn to the melodies in this. And every teacher that I ever brought it up to would like wrinkle their nose and be like, ooh, but let's do something else. Let's do something else. And I'm actually, I'm really glad that they did. It's deceptively complicated. And uh, so I'm actually really glad that I waited until later in life to approach this piece. Um, and uh, so hopefully you've grabbed a sheet with some program notes, a little bit of background available on those. Um, but yes, so thank you so much again for being here.
So the next piece on the program is a woodwind trio. So uh, the woodwind trio, clarinet, oboe, bassoon, is a relatively standard instrumentation for, uh, for bassoon, uh, for woodwind chamber literature. This piece is by a composer named Francais, French composer. And uh, so again, th there's a little bit of program notes that'll kind of give you an idea, but essentially this one is really quirky and uh, there's a lot of flashy and uh, moving around a lot, so hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it.
but seriously just like five minutes or something in case anybody has to use the restroom and, and run back in. Uh, we are trying to get this recital done before my son is here and we're trying to let him see as much as possible before he it, it turns into a pumpkin. So um, yeah, so we'll be back in just a few minutes. But if
So this next piece is one of the uh, premieres that's uh, taking place this evening. This work is by Phoenix composer Eric Sandmeyer, and I'd like to invite him to come up and say a few words. Okay. All right, yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to thank Christy Lynn for the uh, commission on this piece. I wanted to thank uh, Jen and Mark for being uh, wonderful collaborators, world-class musicians, really fun to work with. Uh, this piece was uh, kind of um, suggested to me um, for this instrumentation. I didn't have anything immediately in mind for it, and I had a short deadline tonight. And I wanted to make that deadline, and I also wanted to make the other deadline, which is the recording session. So, um, so I reached into my bag of, uh, of, of starters, you know, uh, little sketches that I had, and I had a, um, something that I thought might work. And it was a piece that, um, that I wrote in the coffee shop, a little start of a piece that was for piano. I thought it might be for piano, but it could work for this. And so I was working with this um, a material, and in the midst of that, um, uh, my sister passed away after a long bout and battle. And we had enough uh, kind of warning that she got to kind of dictate the terms of how she got to depart. And, um, um, and she, she kind of stipulated, you know, no weepy goodbyes and no memorial services and funerals, no grave markers. You know, everyone was kind of really left to um, deal with, with that loss um, in their own way. And so I decided to kind of create this piece as my focal point for how I wanted to kind of process this, uh, this event and allow my subconscious to, to kind of just take over. And um, I, I thought it was appropriate because the piece is not sentimental. 
It is not um, a dirge by any stretch of the imagination. It's kind of a, a flighty, you know, virtuistic kind of light type thing that had a really nice detachment, but somewhere in the mid middle of it, um, kind of a, uh, a hymn-like chorale spiritual moment kind of creeps in. Um, pretty unmistakable, you'll hear that, and I hope Margaret will forgive me for putting that in there, and I hope you'll forgive me, and I hope you enjoy Morning Star. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So premiere number two of the night uh, is by composer Robert Springer. And um, yes, thank you. Thank you everyone for coming and supporting new music and the performance of new music. Um, my piece, I wanted to explore that idea and it's an expression we sometimes self-prescribe, I don't belong here. Or sometimes you're even told you don't belong here. And so I'll give you some landmarks to listen to throughout the piece. The bassoon is our main character who's going to start it off by, you know, kind of describing that feeling of I don't belong. And that's kind of her theme to carry through. And we'll get to a second section where the str it's more for the strings. It's more for the majority, you know. And so you'll see how the bassoon tries to interact with that and how they may or may not let her. And uh, by the end of that section, you'll hear a definite yes or no. And then the next section, it'll kind of quiet and thin out to a development. And a piece of music development is when all the ideas kind of come together and they start to mis uh, mishmash. And uh, you'll kind of see how, the bassoon, how they all get along together. And by the end of that section, you'll kind of see whether it worked out or not. And then the bassoon again will come back with its theme. And this time, you'll have context. You'll understand now what she's saying because you've just experienced it from her point of view, what it's like. And again, the second theme will come back with the strings, and you'll see, you know, is anything different or is everything the same? And by the end of the piece, the bassoon will make its final statement, and then it's for you to decide, you know, how did those relationships work out or did they? So I hope you enjoy this piece. Thank you very much.
struggle here. Hold on just a sec. There we go. Okay. Yes. Thank you, everyone, again, for coming out. Really appreciate it. This last piece is uh, clarinet, bassoon, and piano, as you can see. Uh, last year, Mark and Tim and I had the opportunity to put together a recital of music for this uh, instrumentation, and it was a lot of fun, and this piece in particular. Every time that we finish rehearsing this piece, we're like, wow, that's really fun. I really like that. Uh, so it's really uh, excellent to be able to share all of this with you. Um, thank you again for coming out. Thank you to those who are watching on the live stream. Uh, I heard my brother is watching, so hi. Um, and uh, yeah, so Bill Douglas, trio number two. Thank <laughs> you. 